Hello! Today we're going to take a look at the evidence on whether or not vitamin C can be used to treat cancer. The discovery of vitamin C was one of the most important breakthroughs in human nutrition. It was first found in the 18th century that citrus fruits could prevent the horrible effects of scurvy which led to the deaths of many sailors. However, it wasn't until 1932 that vitamin C was isolated and identified. Vitamin C serves many essential functions in our body in addition to its well-known role as an antioxidant. Prolonged deficiency of vitamin C could lead to some very serious health effects and makes us vulnerable to a number of diseases. Linus Pauling, a world-renowned chemist and two-time Nobel Prize laureate, strongly advocated that megadose quantities of vitamin C above one gram intake per day could prevent and treat many illnesses, including the common cold and even heart disease. However, mainstream medicine has largely ignored or even ridiculed Pauling's claim. This controversy is still very much alive today. Nearly 60 years ago, a Canadian doctor named William McCormick observed that cancer patients had severely low levels of vitamin C in their blood and had scurvy-like symptoms. In 1972, extending this theory, Ewan Cameron, a Scottish surgeon, hypothesized that vitamin C could suppress cancer development. He began treating terminally ill cancer patients and published a case report of 50 patients in which some of the treated patients benefited from high-dose vitamin C. Encouraged by the result, Cameron teamed up with Linus Pauling to conduct clinical trials involving terminal cancer patients. In 1976, they published a study of 100 patients with terminal cancer treated with vitamin C. They demonstrated that patients treated with vitamin C had improved quality of life and a fourfold increase in their mean survival time. A 1982 clinical trial conducted in Japan independently showed a similar result. With these promising outcomes, interest in the potential of vitamin C for cancer therapy grew. However, a double-blind randomized clinical trial conducted by Charles Mortel of the Mayo Clinic failed to show any positive effects of high-dose vitamin C in cancer patients. Mayo Clinic's clinical trials were conducted more rigorously, people trusted the Mayo Clinic's data, and discredited the Cameron Pauling trials, dampening the enthusiasm for vitamin C as a cancer therapy. However, there were two crucial differences between these studies. First, the Mayo Clinic trials abruptly stopped the vitamin C administration, switching to traditional chemotherapy when a patient developed signs of tumor progression. Thus, the overall mean time of vitamin C treatment under the Mayo trials was only 2.5 months, while the Pauling and Cameron trials treated patients for the duration of the entire study period or as long as 12 years. More importantly, the Mayo Clinic trials administered 10 grams of daily vitamin C to patients only orally while the Cameron and Pauling trials administered their vitamin C both orally and intravenously. This difference in the two dosage routes is very important. The oral vitamin C dose in the Mayo Clinic studies was 25 times less than the dose in the Pauling studies. When given orally, vitamin C concentration in human plasma is tightly controlled by multiple mechanisms acting together, 
intestinal absorption, tissue accumulation, renal reabsorption and excretion, and potentially even the rate of utilization. However, when vitamin C is administered intravenously, the tight controls are bypassed and high concentrations of vitamin C can easily be safely achieved. Given the fact that cancer patients were only treated with vitamin C orally in the Mayo Clinic studies, the studies do not disprove high-dose vitamin C's efficacy as a cancer treatment. In the last 10 years, there have been an increased number of phase 1 and 2 clinical trials and case reports testing the safety and efficacy of high-dose vitamin C as a treatment for various cancer patients as a monotherapy or in combinational therapy. Virtually all studies show improved quality of life for cancer patients by minimizing pain and protecting normal tissues from toxicity caused by chemotherapy. Additionally, vitamin C showed synergistic effects when combined with radiation and standard chemotherapies. Some challenges to having large-scale randomized controlled trials Vitamin C cannot be patented, so there isn't private funding to conduct these studies. We're having to rely on government grants and charitable donations to fund these studies. Secondly, the Mayo Clinic studies from the 1980s did so much to prejudice and discredit vitamin C. What is hopeful is that researchers are making advances in identifying the specific mechanisms for how vitamin C can prevent and treat cancer. This will help to mitigate some of the bad press vitamin C got from the old Mayo Clinic studies. In the meantime, for people with a cancer diagnosis, IV vitamin C appears to be worth considering. For everyone else, it's a good idea to make sure we eat an abundant variety of fruits and vegetables that will give us an ample supply of vitamin C on a daily basis. I hope you found the information in this video to be useful. Please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.